Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, it's the last day of my long weekend. I go back to work tomorrow on my shirt week and um, it's been 24 hours now since I brought the vacuum into the pool place and uh, we, we're gonna go back today and figure out what's going on. Now, since I was there last time, which was yesterday, um, I have shocked the pool again, which is uh, something they requested I did. Um, I have also backwashed a filter, and let me explain to you a little bit about what that is. As you recall, last week we replaced the sand in the filter housing here, and basically the sand goes up to about here in the filter housing. The water comes in from the pump, it goes down to the bottom, uh, which uh, filters out all the solid waste in there, and then it's recirculated back into the uh, back into the pool. And the point being is the sand is going to capture any of the uh, any of the waste, any of the you know the contamination, anything in the water that's not water, and it's going to capture it and basically hold it on the top of the sand layer as it filters its way through. Well, every once in a while you want to backwash it, which means basically rather than having the water come from the top to the bottom, you have the water go from the bottom to the top. And so basically all the stuff that's accumulated on the surface of the sand inside the housing gets flushed out to the, to the waste. And you want to do that periodically just to kind of get all of that material out of there. Uh, so I did that this morning. That lowered the water level maybe about a quarter of an inch, uh, but that shouldn't be much of a problem. But actually, I had it right up at the top of the, the skimmer inside the pool, and sometimes if the water's right at the top of the skimmer level, you don't really get good filtration because the you know anything floating on the surface is not going to end up getting pulled into the skimmer, but instead is just going to kind of get either stuck right there on the edge or it's not going to get sucked in. So it's actually not a bad idea to to do that once in a while. Now, I am looking at the pressure here, and when before I did the uh, backwash of the pump, the pressure in the pill in the uh, in the uh, filter housing was about 12 psi. Now it's hovering between eight and nine. So we've decreased the amount of pressure just by backwashing the pump. And so that was a good thing. You just gotta do that every once in a while just to kind of keep things running smoothly. But now that we've completed that, um, I've collected another sample of water. We're gonna go back in to the pool place. We're gonna pick up the uh, vacuum, hopefully, or a replacement uh, if that's necessary. And I'm also going to bring in another sample of water for him to see if anything is different. The water definitely looks a lot better right now. Yeah, there's a lot of gunk floating on it, but that's what the, what the filter housing is all about. But you can see to the bottom pretty clearly. We still got to get down there and vacuum some of the debris out of there, but hopefully when we get the robot back, we'll be able to do that. So we're definitely making good progress on this, but we got a ways to go, but I got two, two or three months to, to do it too. So uh, I've made a lot more progress right now than I thought I was going to, so, uh, or thought that I thought I was going to by this point. So this is a good thing and uh, hopefully we can continue this. Let's go to the pool place. Now I'm gonna make a little detour here over to the Honda place because you remember in the last video I tried to get a some service done on my vehicle and everyone had no idea what I was talking about when I told them what I needed. So we're gonna go over to the Honda place. One of the things uh, the people at the oil change places noticed that it looks like I got maybe a little front end alignment issue because a couple of tires are uh, a little uh, have a little abnormal wear on them so I want to get the get an appointment to get the service done and probably get those two front tires done all right I've got an appointment to get my car looked at next Monday at 11 o'clock uh, in addition to doing the service they also need to look at the tires uh, the front tires uh, when I did my vehicle inspection about a month ago to get my car re-registered the the guy who did the inspection barely passed me on the tires because the front tires 
you know, they basically need to be repaired uh, or replaced. And uh, they also noticed when I was in yesterday trying to get the service done that there's an odd wear pattern on there. So they suggested there might be an issue with alignment. So we're going to have to do that too. That's going to take a little bit of time, but you know what? We want the car to be safe and it's a good, reliable car otherwise. So let's get, just get this taken care of. So I got an appointment for that. Uh, we'll come back in next week and deal with that. And until then, let's go over to the pool place. All right, I'm at the pool place. I've actually got the pool vac back. Uh, there wasn't really anything wrong with the pool vac, except that they think that maybe what happened is some leaf waste got into the impeller. And uh, apparently the thing is smart enough to realize that, hey, I'm not getting the kind of uh, water flow through the system that I should get in. And when it saw that, it just stopped. So the guy just opened it up a little bit, uh, pulled some of the leaf waste out of the impeller, and it's working better. Now, I watched him do it. The practice doesn't look that difficult, so in the future, if this happens again, I at least know what to do about it. Uh, it didn't cost me a dime. They looked at my water chemistry. The water chemistry, they say, is looking a lot better. Um, they recommend that I shock it every five days for, for the time being until we get everything clarified, but I think we're well on our way to having a nice, clean pool again. So so probably won't have to bother these guys now for a little while, uh, but uh, we're going to go home now. Let's see if we can get the rest of the pool cleaned up and uh, we'll go from there. All right, we got the thing into the pool. It is definitely vacuuming. It's doing more than it was doing uh, before because before, like I said, it would run for five or ten seconds and then it would stop. And it's already crossed the pool and starting to do its thing. So. Yeah, I think we got this thing fixed. So we're gonna run a few cycles on this, try and get as much of this gunk sw uh, swept up into this, uh, into the uh, into the bag here, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to be on we'll be well on our way to getting this fixed or getting this water ready to go for this uh, summer. So there you go. You can almost actually see the thing. You see the the sweep in the in the pool right now right it was kind of interesting when I was uh, running it uh, in the uh, in the store there it was actually the first time I'd actually seen it scale the walls that was the thing that's supposed to be special with this model there's three models one that just kind of does the bottom the middle model which is this one which scales the wall and then the high-end one which I guess you can control with your cell phone I decided that was a little unnecessary but I did want one that scaled the walls, and uh, like I said, this one's running more now than, than I've seen it run in some time, so um, we're going to let it do its thing, and uh, hopefully we're well on our way to getting this fixed. It is interesting that the accumulation of waste is all in the center of the pool, but I guess that makes a lot of sense because the water is spinning, and the water is going to be having the most velocity along the outside edge so anything in the outside edge is going to be kind of swept away by the water velocity but as you move more and more towards the center you get less water velocity and it makes sense then that all the debris in there is going to all accumulate in the middle so it's been a couple of days now since i've planted these things and i'm honestly happy to say that everything is looking really good i was a little unsure whether some of these purple things were going to survive but they all seem to be doing all right nothing seems to have been uh, shocked to the point where it dies sometimes that happens when you put plants in the ground but everything's looking really good right now so that is an encouraging thing and i hope that continues you see what I mean about how this area gets direct sun in the morning and uh, and afternoon. So hopefully these plants are going to do really well in here. Now supposedly we have a rainstorm coming in tomorrow and tomorrow night. So I think I want to bring one of those pieces of flagstone out and put it in this area back here that I talked to you about the other day. Uh, because sometimes when the rain comes off the roof it's a little too it comes a little too fast for the rain gutter to deal with and it ends up pouring into this area which kind of erodes everything away so i want to have something hard to for it to hit and maybe you know not cause as much damage in the area and there is one nice big piece of flagstone i have in the backyard so i think i'm going to try bringing that out here 
Yeah, see this is sort of what I had in mind. Actually, I had two smaller pieces of flagstone that I ended up putting here in the end. I uh, actually ended up breaking one of them when I put it into place, but that's okay. Um, basically now this is directly below where the corner of uh, two parts of the of the roof come together where the water all kind of channels down and sometimes when it comes real hard uh, it's faster than the rain gutter can deal with so this will deal with any overflow hopefully and uh, I don't know we're gonna try it out for now if it doesn't work I may actually put some smaller river stone or something in here I've used river stone before in my yard and it's also good for preventing erosion so I don't know. We're going to play with it. We'll see what this looks like. Uh, we'll take a look at it tomorrow night when it rains, if it rains, and uh, see if that does anything for us. But uh, like I said, this should, should help a lot, uh, prevent some of the erosion that sometimes becomes an issue here. So anyway, I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.